Hi everyone, it's Chester at Blue PKN Computer Training and in this video we're going to look at fuzzy matches or partial matches using lookup functions. We've got two scenarios. Uh, one is where we need to calculate the discounted price on our products and different brands get a different discount. So what we've got to do is match part of these text strings with these text strings over here and return the correct discount and then do some sort of calculation. And um, we're going to look at three methods of doing this, one with XLOOKUP and one with filter. And that's going to work if you have Office 365. Uh, but also, if you don't have that, I'll, I'll do it also using index and match so you don't feel left out. And then the other scenario, so this, this scenario here is where your, where your lookup table contains the kind of partial match, partial text string, uh, and the other table contains the full text string. But then what we'll do is we'll look at it the other way around where you basically got the lookup table that contains the full text string and you're looking up a partial text string. So here what we're doing is we're trying to look up the price of an item, but we only have part of the description. So I've got to find ice bucket somewhere within the text string, within the first column of our lookup table or whatever. Uh, and we'll do that using X lookup, but also so you don't feel look up, uh, you don't feel left out because X lookup isn't is only in uh, Office 365. We'll also do it using V lookup in an older version of Excel. So we'll start with uh, Excel 365 and let's look at our first scenario. So what we've got to do is we've got to try and find this partial text within this longer text string. Now, to do this, you're going to need to use search. And search will allow you to find the position of a text string within another text string. And what we're going to do is we are going to have to look for any of these brand uh, values within this text string over here. I'm going to lock that because I'm going to obviously be copying it down. So I'll lock our find text range and I'm looking for it within this text here okay start number I'm not interested in because I want to start searching from the beginning of my within text string okay now I'm going to close the bracket and I'm going to press enter these value items basically means for example J Oliver M&S own brand and kitchen press haven't been found but when we get to basics it's saying well that was found in position one. Basics was found in position one of this text over here. Don't worry that I've got it formatted as currency. Now, the actual position we're not particularly interested in, but we are interested in the fact that it's found a position rather than returning an error. So what we can do is if we put this in is number, and I close the bracket, then I just get trues or false. So then what I can do is I can say X lookup. Now my lookup value is true. I want to find the position of true in this array of results that is number and search are returning. Okay, so once I've found that position within the lookup array, this is our lookup array, I want to return something in the same position but within the return array. Well, that's this array over here. I we need to fix that. And uh, then I can just close the brackets because I'm doing an exact match, etc. And if I press enter, um, let's just format this as percentages. And then if I copy this down, I've got a little problem here because City Kitch isn't featured here. So what I can do with this if not found argument is just say zero because there's no discount for that brand. So if I copy that down, 
Let me get my zero there. And if we have a look, for example, basics, brand, 20% discount. Let's take another one, own brand, 12% discount. You can see it's picked out the correct discount. And then all I need to do is just to work out the new discount price, I can say price times one minus the result of the X lookup. Format as currency, obviously. Copy it down and it kind of works. So that's how you could do it with X lookup. Now, what about filter? Filter is another option. And what we need to do is take all this again the bit that we did with is number and search, copy that. And I'm going to paste it into here. Now, how's filter going to help us? Well, I say filter. So what I want to do is specify my array, which would be these discounts, which I need to fix and include is basically this logical test here. So in the include argument, you've got to have something that returns true or false, a logical test. Well, if I F9 this, you can see that I have got my logical test. So it's only going to return the value in this array in that position, the fifth position. Okay, and then if empty, I want a zero. That'll deal with that city kitchen product. So if I copy this down, hopefully now, if I do my calculation, one minus the filter, I'll get the same results. Okay, and you can see I have got the same results. And for the city kitchen one, I get the same price because there's no discount. Okay, so those methods will work if you've got Office 365. But if you haven't, then we need to do something a little bit different. We need to use index and match. Okay, so let's start this afresh. So I can use search again, and I want to find these values here, which I'm fixing within this text. And if I press enter, I get value. Now it doesn't spill in this version of Excel, but what I can do is select that and do F9. You can see that instead of spilling, it shows all of those return values within, uh, within the one cell. And there we are, I have that fifth position. So then I can say is number. I get a false because it's shown the first result in this older version of Excel. If I do F9, I can see my trues in the fifth position. Now, what I've got to do is, if I can find the position of true within this returned array here, uh, I can do that with match, and then I can use index to return the equivalent, uh, the, the value in the same position in another, in another column. So what I can do is put this in match, and I'm looking up true. And my lookup array is returned by is number of search, and I'm doing an exact match. So I put the zero there. And again, if I do my F9, I get a five. Okay, so it's returning the correct position. So if I then do index, so array is what I'm looking for here. That's going to be all the possible values that you want to return. That's the discount column. And basically, we want to return a row number, not interested in a column number. So we can just close the bracket there. And I press Enter and I get NA. Now, if I do my F9, you can see it does in fact return 0.2, which is the correct answer. 0.2 for basics, but it's not giving me that. Now, the reason for that is, is that I'm using here, for example, with the search function, more than one value that I'm searching for. And that 
that's not how search is kind of designed. It's designed to search for one text value within another. Because I'm using an array of values there, what I'm going to have to do is create an array formula. And to do that in this version of Excel, previous to Office 365, I have to use Control Shift Enter, and then I get the point two. Now I can copy that down. I get an NA for City Kitch. That's not working. So what I could do, I can either use if error or if NA. Now I'll use if error in case you don't have a recent enough version. So of Excel. So there's my value, and then I need a value of error, which would be zero. And then I need to do control shift enter. And copy it down. Looks like one thing I did forget to do is to fix this reference. So I'll do that. That's why I'm getting all these zeros down here. So control shift enter, copy down, and there we are. So then I can do my calculation. I can say the price times one minus if error. Close the bracket. Don't forget to do control shift enter to create an array formula. You see, you get your brace brackets when you do that. Copy it down and I get my discounted prices. Okay, right, let's move on to the next scenario. So here we've got the partial text in this table, but in our lookup table, we have the full text. Using XLOOKUP, how do we do this? Well, XLOOKUP lookup value. Now, what we need to do is use wildcards. We need to say that we're looking up a value that contains ice bucket. So if I just did this without all the concatenation, basically it would look something like this. The stars either side of J6 basically means it contains that value. Okay, now I need to work a little bit harder. The stars need to go in quotation marks as they're strings, because it's a string, and I need to concatenate or join it with the item I'm looking up. And I need a star on the other side. Okay. Now the lookup array is the product column, and the return array are the prices. If not found, we are not worried about that. So I'll just do two commas. Match mode, what you do have to say with XLOOKUP, you've got to say you are doing a wildcard match. So I'll go for that. So I get 10 pound for the ice bucket. And let's have a look at the other work, others are working. The tube pan, 22 pounds, coasters. 13 pounds, you can see how it's worked. Okay, so that's worked with XLOOKUP. Let's see how we can do that with VLOOKUP in an older version of Excel. XLOOKUP is only available in Office 365. So VLOOKUP, lookup value, pretty much the same really. Ampersand this value here. And then the table array is this whole table here, which I fix. And then call index number is two, and I'm doing an exact match. So there's no option there to say that you explicitly that you're doing a wildcard uh, match, but it works. So in actual fact, X lookup, uh, V lookup is slightly easier than X lookup, despite the fact that it is an older function. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Thanks very much for listening. What I will do is I'll leave a link in the description to a page on our website where you can download these files uh, so you can see how they, they actually work. Yeah, but thanks very much for listening and I'll see you next video.